the name of the loving and living God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. Okay, first of all, I've got a question. How many of you were here last Sunday? Last Sunday? That was a powerful sermon. And for those of you who weren't here, I want you to go home after this service and listen to it online. It was uh, Vinnie Holland, who was the uh, who's associate pastor at First Baptist Church, and um, it was a powerful sermon. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I got so excited doing that sermon that I started thinking, it, it was about church. It was about church and how important it is to go to church. I got so excited about that sermon that uh, during it, I, I started thinking about all these other reasons that I could come to church even more often and not even get paid to come to church. <laughs> it was a strong sermon. It was about church. And here we are in church. Today's gospel, the rich man during his lifetime focused primarily on his wealth, um, living high on the hog. Um, surely he had loads of possessions. He was, he was rich and he liked it. And he did not focus so much on his compassion for others, nor on his faith in God. And that was his choice. In the great commandment, Jesus tells us to love God and to love each other. And in the author of First Timothy tells us not to love money. We have a choice. The question for us here in church, in church, the question for us as a church, a faith community, is how can we help each other make a choice that is right and good and faithful? Or how can we help each other make that sort of the automatic response we have of making that good, right, and faithful choice when it comes to focusing on ourselves only, or focusing on those with whom we are in relationship, and most importantly, with God. During our preparation for presenting people to be confirmed and received, we've been going through the outline of faith, the catechism, and um, the focus for this final, this final week as we prepare for next Sunday was on the mission of the church. And the catechism in our Book of Common Prayer states this, that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. So my point here, you see as people of faith, there's clearly a pattern of what we're called to do by the church, by scripture, by Jesus, and that is to love one another and to love God. Now, of course we've got to take care of ourselves. If we don't take care of ourselves, somebody else has to take care, of, take care of us. But there is this strong, strong river of individualism running through our culture that is so seductive at times and so powerful at times. It sweeps us off our feet and we get into that even before we realize it. Just like just like that rich man in the parable. But there is another way, and we can choose which way to take. Um, several years ago, Joanna and I went to New York City. That's where I was, went to seminary. And I wanted to show her that place where I spent an important three years of my life. It's on Ninth Avenue. Uh, 21st Street and 9th Avenue on the Lower West Side. And after we'd gone through the seminary and I'd sort of shared some tales, um, we were walking up 9th Avenue to right across from the Holy Apostles Episcopal Church, which has one of the, one of the largest soup kitchens, kitchens feeding programs for the poor and homeless in downtown New York. 
Um, and then right above that, there was a, there was a street vendor on the, on the sidewalk, and he had T-shirts for sale. And, and I walked and I said, let's, let's check these T-shirts out. And I saw one that said, I am too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. I said, Joanne, Joanne. That's exactly what I've heard people in downtown D.C. say. The poor and the homeless in downtown D.C. that would come to the Church of the Epiphany. I bet, I bet a dozen times a day I'd say to someone, um, well, how are you doing? He'd say, say, Rev, I'm too, too blessed to be stressed. And I wondered every time that was said, are they faking it? Are they trying to sugarcoat it? Are they saying, don't ask me. I don't want to tell you how tough things are. But the more I got that response and looking into their eyes, the more I believed that they believed it. That whatever their challenges in life were, they did feel too blessed to be stressed. I started thinking, I need to work on that. Because that is a choice, whether we are rich or poor, or caught up in the conflict between rich and poor. We could be too blessed to be stressed when we focus on the love that we share with others and the love that we receive and give to God. We could live in a healthy and faithful relationship with both God and others. It is in our faith DNA. That's sort of how the early church functioned. The stories that we get in scripture and from other documents is that they shared their resources, they cared for each other, they looked after each other. They built up communities that were supportive and inspiring and healthy. They had their challenges, but they, they always returned to that, that rock, that cornerstone, that believing that God is, was with them is a place of comfort and being connected through a shared faith in Jesus Christ was a solid relationship that they could depend on. That's in our faith DNA. And centuries later, 300, 400, 500 along there, the Celtic Christians evolved, having received the word from those apostles who eventually got to their area, which is now Scotland and Ireland and Isle of Man. And and they decided to live the Christian life just like those early, church, those early church people. That is, focusing on relationships. Not necessarily belief, other than the basics of scripture and worship, but focusing on relationships and how they could find God and trust that God would be present in their primary relationships. It's in our DNA to do this thing. Those Celts not only found it important to really focus on relationships, but also with each other, but also with God in creative ways. They found God's presence in God's creation in so many ways. A thin place where they literally could feel God's presence in a stronger way than in other places. But they honored the creation that God made and found it to be a place where they could be with God and therefore not only had a relationship that was healthy and holy with each other, but with God and with what God had done. It's in our DNA, our faith DNA, to love each other, to love God's creation, and to love God. And we have a choice. Yes, again, sometimes we've got to focus on ourselves because we need to do certain things. But other times, it's a whole lot better to say, what's going on here? And how is God in the way that we relate to each other? Because that is what Jesus calls us to do. 
Okay, church, we've got choices to make every day. May God be with you as you choose. Amen.